daily specials assignment requires that you read in data from a text file and also write data back out to that same text file as the data changes. We'll use functions and we'll also use parallel list or tuples in providing a data structure to our program. There's a data file provided in Canvas called specials.txt and it looks like this. It's just seven lines of text with a meal that's a special of the day for each on each line. The first line being Sunday, the last line or seventh line being Saturday. Your program will display all the specials for the week and then provide a menu to the user to list all the specials with letter A, show a day's specials and the user can specify which day of the week they want to see. Also change the special for any one of the seven days and then X for exit. There's more information in the instructions as well as some screenshots. So here you see when they provide letter B, enter the data alter. We're going to use one for Sunday and seven for Saturday. So the user enters a two that's going to be changing the day for Monday. And they will list the, the special that's on Monday. Same with the letter C. We're going to them choose a day and then enter a new meal for that day. Once we change a meal, it should write back out to the data file. So the next time we come in, it will reflect the most accurate and most recent information. And then some tips for you on developing this. And then finally, the assessment rubric. Let me just quickly jump over and show you the program running. So here's the program running. We see the seven days. So when it loads, it also goes out and reads that data file and brings it in to our list of the seven meals. Again, if I press letter A, I'm going to see the same thing I see up here. Where it's going to show the daily specials and let the user choose an option. Letter B, the meal for Thursday, that'd be five. And we're told the special on Thursday is baby back ribs and baked potato. I can change a meal. So I'm going to do C. And let's go ahead and change that five. So I'm asked to enter the new menu item to, to replace the baby back ribs and baked potato. And so I'm going to say pot roast and vegetables. So now if I list the daily specials, letter A, I see that Thursday is the pot roast and vegetables. If I choose X to quit and come back and re and run the module again, we now see that Thursday, the data that's being brought in from the text file is pot roast and vegetables. I'd suggest you pause the video here and try to complete this on your own or with a classmate. And if you struggle, then come back and watch the rest of the video, which I'll present my code solution through a code review. So here's my code review. I could actually use a dictionary where I have the day of the week and the item is one way we could do it. But we want to work a little bit more with lists. So I have a list here called specials. And each item of that list, there's going to be seven items. It's going to say closed initially. And I'm multiplying that as seven. So I could do closed, comma, closed, comma, closed. But since they're all the same, it's easier just to do closed and multiply it by seven. A little shortcut there. I'm going to have a tuple called days in which we have Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, and Saturday. Remember the difference between list and tuples is lists are enclosed in brackets and tuples are enclosed in parentheses. Lists are mutable. Tuples are immutable. I can't change the values of a tuple. And the dictionaries, which I could use, would have a key value pair. So the key would be the day of the week and the value would be the items or the meal for each day of that week, and it's enclosed in curly brackets. So here's my main function, def main. I'm going to call a method called read specials, and then a method called list specials. We're going to create a sentinel of x equals false, and while x is equal to false, x is going to equal the menu. x is going to equal the menu method. Here's my definition of the function for read specials. We're going to have a global variable called specials, which is the one that occurs up here. Our data file, we're going to open our data called specials.txt for read purposes. 
specials is going to equal data files dot read. I'm going to split on the new line character. So the first value of special is going to be that first line. The second one's going to be the second line. But remember, we start counting with zero. So this will be index zero through index six. Then I'm going to close my data file. If I want to write that back out, I'm going to take the global list of specials, open up my data file, this time for write. So I'm going to W there as the second parameter. For I in range of zero to seven, so it's going to go through each of the items of specials element i and write it to the data file along with a new line character. And then we'll close that data file. So once we read the specials in for the main, we also want to list the specials. So here's the list specials. We're going to print the daily specials for i in range 0 through 7. And I'm going to print element 0 colon element i with a couple spaces in there. And the format's going to be days element i. That's going to come from my days tuple. I'm going to write justify that by 12 characters. And then the specials list item of index i be written behind that in the placeholder 1. And then I want to print a new line character. I'm going to jump down to the menu. So here's the menu that's being printed. As long as x is equal to, to false, we're going to Print choose an option. We're going to have list the specials, show day specials, change the specials, and exit. I did that all in one line with some new line characters built in here. You could do it on four separate lines if you wanted. Have them enter A, B, C, or X. We'll convert it to an upper so they can do lowercase or uppercase. That's going to go into value choice. If choice is A, we're going to call that list specials. We already saw that. We'll return false. And remember, the value that's being returned here is going into I, my variable x. If they choose a b, so elif choice is equal to b, we're going to use call the show day and we'll return false again. And if choice is c, we're going to change menu return false. But if choice is x, if it's equal to x, we're going to return true. Otherwise, the catch all will be return false. So let's take a look then at the show day and the change menu methods. So here's the show day, day int. It's going to equal int, and we're going to ask them to enter an, an integer between 1 and 7, with 1 being Sunday, 7 being Saturday. We're going to convert that string input to an integer, and then we're going to subtract 1 from it, because they're entering 1 through 7, which is what our user is familiar with, counting with 1, but our data is stored with index 0 through 6. So we're going to subtract 1 after we convert their input to an integer. Then I'm going to print the specials on Placeholder 0 is placeholder 1, new line character. We're going to format that the days with element day int and the specials with element day int. The change menu is very similar. Again, we're going to ask them to enter a day 1 through 7, but we're going to convert that to an integer and subtract 1, so we're looking at indexes 0 through 6. We're going to print currently the, specials, the special on element 0, that's going to be my days element day int, is, and that's going to be specials element day int. And then we're going to ask them to enter a new menu item for that day, again using the placeholder 0 with specials day int. And if it's blank, we're going to exit. But if its new menu is not blank or not null, then we're going to set the specials of day int to the new menu item that they entered. And then we'll write our specials. We're going to auto save the data back out to our text file. And then at the very end here, of course, we have our main method call to run our program. If you just jumped into this video and haven't seen the prior videos to this, I invite you to check out my Python playlist of videos. And if you'd like to be alerted to future videos that I create, you can click my picture up in the top right and subscribe to the channel.